Praise God. Are we on? Okay. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I tell you, I'm glad to be here. I love to be in his presence. Amen. I, I, I just, I seek his presence. I want to worship him. I come here with a ready heart. Do we have anybody in here with a ready heart? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I know we have a few that are out there uh, uh, doing a prison service tonight. So let's remember them as we, um, as we go into our service. I pray that we'll have a lot of souls saved. Uh, and I still see people pulling up in the parking lot. So that's good. And, uh, we're going to get this building filled up here one day. Amen. How many believes that's going to happen? I do too. Well, we got some good music coming, and we got a, I got a good word to bring tonight. But let's, uh, let's open up with prayer, can we? Father God, we just thank you so much, God, for everything that you have given us. We are so thankful, God, for your mercy and grace. God, we are so thankful for your word. Lord, we are so thankful for this time of fellowship together. And God, this building that we can come into together as a body and just build up in your word, God. Build ourselves up, God. Our strengthen our inner man on your word, God, and in praise and fellowship, God. We ask you just to come. Holy Ghost, we invite you. You are welcome in this place. Everybody just tell him right now. Say, come, Holy Ghost. We welcome you, Holy Ghost. Fill this place and let your will be done in the name of Jesus and we will give you all of the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's give God a hand. Let's get ready for the music. Go ahead and get your, get your mind set up for worship, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. How many realize that in all your worship and all your praise of God that what you're really doing is preparing yourself for a holy habitation of the Spirit of God. Amen. To worry that a man of flesh in a place out here where we can use it, where we can share it with others. Hallelujah. And share it with the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. We need to la- uh, uh, submit ourselves unto the Word of God. Hallelujah. Unto His Spirit to be prepared by Him. Amen. Hallelujah. To be what we're supposed to be in this earth today. Hallelujah.
be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. serious about that hallelujah submitting yourself to the word submitting yourself to the spirit of god hallelujah that he might be we might be a holy habitation that's what we're doing we're building a spiritual house amen hallelujah we need to grow to the fullness hallelujah because we got something that we need to give to others hallelujah and if we don't grow to our full potential hallelujah we won't reach them amen we won't fill the our space amen and touch the others that we're supposed to touch amen I mean, our, 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 our family needs to be touched, hallelujah, by us. Our acquaintances, people at work, hallelujah, need to be touched by us. That's why it's so important, hallelujah, we lend ourselves to the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we do, our light will shine, amen, in this dark world.
that line No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy and sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the line I wondered aimlessly my life you will sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light Yeah, I saw the light, I saw the light No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy with sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light I was a fool to wander astray Straight is the gate and narrow the way Now I'm traded the wrong for the right Praise the Lord, I saw the light Yeah, I saw the light, I saw the light No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy and sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light Yeah, I saw that light, I saw that light No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light Yeah, praise the Lord, I saw the light Yeah, praise the Lord, I saw the light Praise the Lord, I, I saw the light. Praise God, I saw that light. Praise God, I saw that light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. We started off with sanctuary, but praise God. You know why we're preparing ourselves. You know what? He's still drawing us by his spirit. He still has direction for us. He has purpose for us. Amen. And hallelujah. As we seek him, hallelujah, he's drawing us to him. And he's showing us our, uh, the light and the path, our pathway and which way we should go. Amen. Thank God he's still drawing us. Amen. He hadn't forgot about us. He still knows your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Feel the warmth of 
can be seated. He is all I want. He's all I've ever needed. He said if we seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, then all the things that we need will be added unto him. So what could we say but you're all I want, Lord? You fulfill every need in my life, no matter what it is. I just pray that the group that's down in the um, at the prison tonight, they're probably already started their service, and I pray that God will just bless them and give them many souls tonight. It's not easy driving all the way to Columbia for one service, but they're happy to do it because they love Jesus and because they want to tell others about him. Could I have some ushers, please, to come and receive God's tithe and our offerings? Brittany, if you'll come on and get ready. And Would you pray, please? Amen.
Praise God. Didn't she do good on that? That was awesome. One more time. Praise God. That was good again, wasn't it? She's walking fast. <laughs> She's afraid we're going to say one more time. <laughs> Praise God. Ronnie, will you switch, switch me over, please, sir? Last week, I think we got the uh, effects on... <clears throat> last week I brought this same slide up but I never did get 
I never did get to go over this message. We, uh, we, we read one verse off of here and then we started praising and worshiping. Amen. Uh, if you weren't here, man, you missed it, Betty. You missed it. I called her. I told her, I said, man, you missed it. And she was like, oh, I wanted to be there. Uh, you know, we, I tell you, we just, we really got in God's presence, didn't we? Don't y'all love being in his presence? We need that. Amen. I don't, you know, and I don't want to just, I never just want just those little spots, those little times, those little seasons. I want to be in his presence all the time. Amen. I want to walk in his presence all the time. It's wonderful in his presence. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. We give you glory and honor. We praise you. We worship you. We ask you to just come into this service. I pray that you would just rightly divide the word. I pray that you would not let one word fall from my mouth that the Holy Ghost would not utter. I pray that the Spirit of God would fill this place and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said amen. This is the third part on the keys of the kingdom. And we are specifically getting into uh, talking about the, the spirit of the Lord. You know, uh, the spirit of the Lord, as we discovered, is in the Hebrew and in the Greek, it's also the same word as the mind of the Lord. You know, it is such a wonderful thing that we can actually have his spirit living inside of us, amen, and, and, and speaking to us. How many of you have ever had an experience where the Holy Ghost has just talked to you, spoke to you, gave you something? Uh, I think I've told you all the story, which I'll tell you again. Uh, we, me and Hope, we were, we were going to go get us a coffee one time, and we, uh, we're going to go down to this other store, and, uh, this music store, and I, but first we wanted the coffee, and we were right there near Haywood Road, and we were coming down Lawrence, and I said, I want one of those Starbucks. And we, we had it in our mind. And uh, so you know it has to be God to, to change your direction. And uh, all of a sudden, I just had this vision come to my head of this car wreck, and it was right at this intersection right there on, on Haywood Road. And I said, Hope, I said, go straight. And she said, why? We were going to go get the coffee first. I said, yeah, but we need to go straight. I said, Lord, just gave me a vision of this car wreck and I said we were in I said I just let's go straight so we went on there and we I didn't, honestly didn't think anything else about it we got in there and looking at music and when we were coming back down the road and we were going to get a coffee right when we were making the left on the Haywood Road all of a sudden I said hope look and there was a wreck right there uh, and there was they already had the the fire truck there and it was right there at that intersection now that's God he speaks to us and I'm, I, I'm thankful that I, that I listened to him when he told me, what if I said, forget it, God, I want a coffee. <laughs> Who knows what would have happened, amen? Uh, I read you this scripture last week. I want to read it again. Exodus thirty-three, twelve through 18. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you. Everybody say, Lord, say that to me. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Does anybody want to say, I will, I will give you rest? Say, the Lord, say, give me rest. <laughs> Amen. Uh, verse 15, then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else would distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? Verse 17, and the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, show me your glory. We've got to have that kind of heart to say, you know what, Lord, I do not want to go without your presence. Amen. I don't want to keep going through a, a, a daily routine without your presence. I need your presence every day in my life. 
Sometimes we, uh, it can be easy to think that I've just gotten really good at this and I can do it. You get that attitude and I tell you, God will always quickly jerk a knot in your tail, won't he? He's done it to me. He'll quickly show us and, you know, and we'll be right back there. Oh God, I need you. I never want to think that I can do anything without him. We have to have him. And I tell him all the time, God, let your presence go with me. If, even if I go uh, fishing, Mike, I say, Lord, let your presence go with me on the water. I don't even have to be doing something that you would consider to be uh, something of the word. I, I don't just do it when I go to church. I don't just do it uh, when I'm praising. I say with everything, Lord, let your presence go with me. Amen. Um, the word glory in the Hebrew is the word kavod, kavod. And the meaning is abundance, riches, honor, splendor, reputation. That's a good one. He's saying, show me your glory. Show me your reputation. You remember when the queen came to visit Solomon and she basically told him your reputation of what I've heard doesn't even come close because who you really are and everything that I'm seeing far exceeds the reputation and here's Moses saying show me your glory he's saying show me who you are man if God shows us his reputation in our lives if and really if we will allow him to show us See, if you really trusted his reputation, then whenever something goes wrong, you'd say, I ain't worried about it. Something happens, I ain't worried about it. I, I have been tested on this because the closer we get to Hope's due date, I mean, I'm having to, God, he is, because, you know, it, it's expensive to have another child. I mean, it is like having a, a, another house payment when you have to pay for daycare. It really is. Uh, and I've, I've had to learn to really, he's been testing me out, Lord, I, I trust you. Lord, show me your reputation in our life, amen? And, you know, I can hinder it if I don't trust him, if I don't allow him to move in my life. If I try to do things myself, if I worry, then I'm out of position. I want to be like the birds of the air. Nature. Nature. The word glory in Greek is the word doxa, D O X A, and it means nature. It means full weight, heavy weight. How many wants to know the fullness of God? Show God, show me your fullness. And God, if along the way you, you've got to you you've got to get me out of the way so that you can do it, then God move me. I am my biggest hindrance. Do you realize that? You are your biggest hindrance because of this five inches between your head. Now, mine might be 10 inches. I don't know. I got a big head. <laughs> we knew Tyler was ours when he came out because I said, Dad, that's my boy. He, that big, big cranium he's got. He's got to... I've got to get this out of the way sometimes because sometimes reasoning and logic doesn't line up with what God says to believe. My brain says, oh no, this is about to go under, but I have to trust his word and say, as long as I'm holding on to him, I'm going to be fine. These people got power over you. I've had that situation in jobs many times where I'm thinking, man, I'm at the mercy of these people. But God reminds me, go to my word. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the word. It can be hard to get this out of the way because we have to deal with this all the time. Do we not? So how do we get this out of the way? If our mind is wanting to work against us sometimes because of the old nature, 
I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I didn't just immediately everything fall in place. There's things that I work on all the time. There's some things that were immediate, but there's other things that it's, it's taken time. Praise God, I'm, I'm farther because I, I'm following in his spirit. I'm walking after the path that he is showing me. I'm walking after the light. But I still have to deal with this. And so I'm careful what I put in it. I'm really careful about what Tyler, Tyler puts in his. Because there are things that we see on a day-to-day basis that when I was a kid, it wasn't on television. Now commercials come on and it's like, oh my goodness, where was the rating on this commercial before it come on? You have questions that are asked that maybe would never have come up. Daddy, what's that? (laughs) Oh my goodness, that's a commercial, son. For what? Don't worry about it. (laughs) I want to... God to show his reputation in my life. I want it to be evident, amen? Uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13. We had um, read this last week, uh, or no, week before. Who had directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor hath taught him? 1 Corinthians two sixteen. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Everybody say that. We have the mind of Christ. Praise God. Mind, uh, we went over this, but I'm going to go over it one more time. That word we're in, uh, in Isaiah 40, when it said, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, that word spirit again is the word ruach, which means wind, breath, spirit, mind, Seat of emotion, desire, seat or organ of mental acts. We had went over this, right? I want to make sure, but I want to give it to you again just in case. Where is the seat or organ of mental acts? It's your mind. So, do you all realize how blessed we are that the Spirit of God can actually live inside of us? And if his spirit is in you, guess what? You have access to knowledge and to wisdom and to understanding that you may not have had had you not had him. If you are in business, he can be giving you business ideas. You're into music, he can give you song lyrics. I don't have to tell any of you preachers but you know what it's like to be driving down the road and all of a sudden God just give you a message it's amazing I can study and study and study and seek and sometimes it takes a while to get something together that he's he's given me but then sometimes he'll just boom lay it all on me and I have to pull over and write every bit of it down and I'm thinking Lord why can't you just do this all the time (laughs) our mind Genesis 41, 37 through 40. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man? One in whom is the spirit of God. That word spirit again is ruach, mind. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, who made it known to him? Why? What did he have? The Spirit of God. One in whom is the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Look at that. There is, have you ever had somebody tell that about you? There is no one so discerning and wise as you. Was he born with great intellect higher than anybody else? Did he, did God make him and say, you know what? This one's going to be so much different than everybody else. I ain't going to give anybody else a chance to be like this. No, he has no respect of persons. You know, I love the scripture that says, uh, The poor and rich have this in common. 
God created them both. It doesn't mean that he created some to be poor and some to be rich. It means their life, their decisions that they made in life got them to two areas. But you all came from the same place, the same source. So we all have the capacity to be either way. That gives me hope, amen. Anybody else want to be on one side rather than the other? Can anybody raise their hand and say, I just want to be dirt poor and bills pile. I don't think anybody wants that, do we? God made us both. Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. When the mind of the Lord, when the spirit of the Lord is inside of you, he will make you rare. That's good. You shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. He submitted himself to God. He had the spirit of God inside of him and it made him rare in the number one superpower of that day. Do you realize that we need that today? How many are, look around at, at business, at government, and you say, we need some different people. We need some people with some answers that are discerning. And is wise. We need some people that God can give some ideas to. Do you realize God wants to wants to impact this earth? Do you know how He impacts this earth? Through people. He always uses people. He loves His people. And because of the relationship that he has set up between us and him, he has made it to where he wants to use us to impact the earth. So when you see the earth and the condition it's in now, you see that there's a lot of people that are not allowing him to move through them. Is that good? Exodus 28.3 Tell all the skilled workers and, and what we're going over here is I want you guys just to see the difference that the spirit of the Lord makes in our lives we can look at the biblical history and see what his spirit what it does how it changes circumstances I mean look at the the children of Israel I mean they were in bondage for 400 years all of a sudden one man who was after God God speaks to him through a bush. He obeys. He goes there. And all of a sudden, I mean, and look what he told him. He says, unless you go with me. God was with him. God can deliver you out of anything. We just have to let him. You realize how fast, how much faster they could have got into the promised land if they had got out of their own way? He took them to the land to show them what was theirs, but it was this brain of theirs saying, well, we can't take that. It's too big. I mean, they done seen the water spread, but they don't believe. It can be hard to get this out of the way. I don't know about you, but I want God's mind. Tell all the skilled workers to whom I have given wisdom in such matters that they are to make garments for Aaron for his consecration so he may serve me as a priest. Now what I want you to take from this is look, tell all the skilled workers to whom I have given wisdom in such matters. God has wisdom. He gives wisdom. If you have an ability and a gift, guess who gave it to you? God. Now imagine how much more that gift is magnified if we let him in and let him work through us. Exodus 31, 3. And I have filled him with the spirit of God. Everybody say mind of God, spirit of God. With wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. God can take whatever is inside of you and he uses it. 
He can take whatever you have, whatever ability you have, and he can magnify it. He can refine it. He wants, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. God wants to make you rare. The Bible says, a city on a hill shall not be hid. He said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt. A city on a hill cannot be hid. That means if you submit to him and his spirit is in you and you are saying, Lord, I am here for your will to do what it is that I'm supposed to do here in the earth, then it'll be like a city that it's on a hill. Men will not be able to cover you up. Your gift, no matter who hates you, they will not be able to hide it. They will actually put you out there to be used. God wants to use you. But he got, he has to have his mind, his spirit. He wants us to be working towards his desire, his intent, what he has purposed. We can be very successful as long as we're after what it is that he wants. I don't want a false success. You know, wouldn't it be awful to be really successful at something, but it wasn't where you were called to be and you get there and you missed out on what God called you to do. I want to be successful in the right area, amen. <clears throat> Exodus 35, 20 through 22. I have a few scriptures here. I'm going to have to move kind of quick through these. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord. For the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service and for the sacred garments, all who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. One key word, willing, willing. We have to be willing. Did he make them do it? They had to be willing. I want God to speak ideas. Do you realize if you want God to give you things, you have to be able to do what it is that he tells you to do. There's people I've told stuff to before at work and, and they'll just ignore it. They'll do it again. I say, look, this is the way this has to be done. They'll ignore it. Finally, something will mess up and then they'll say, oh, I wish I had done what the procedure said. You mean listen? <laughs> Numbers 11, 1 through 17. I got a few scriptures here I'm going to read. Uh, and, and I had went over some of this last week, but I want to give you guys the entire context of this. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them, that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses heard, unto the, heard prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place to bear it, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Verse 4, And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel who, uh, excuse me, of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish, which we did, in, uh, we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of bdellium. Verse 8, And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. Verse 11, And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou 
afflicted thy servant. I mean, this guy had to be under some great pressure to say this. Did he not? Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Verse 14, I am not able to bear all this people alone because it, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not, let me not see my wretchedness. I mean, this is great distress. I mean, God, I, I am burdened down. There's so much heavy going on. If this is the way things are going to be, then if I found favor in thy sight, just kill me. Have you ever felt that way? Maybe you've never said this, but I think at any given time, some of us at some point has just felt like, I feel like giving up. It's not a good feeling, is it? And the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. Verse 17, and I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit Everybody say, mind, ruach, which is upon thee and will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone. Do y'all see how important God, I mean, if when you have a team, a group of people at a business, you have to get everybody on the same bus so that you're going the same direction. Have you ever got on a bus and it want, somebody needs to go uptown, somebody needs to go downtown, and you say, we want to both go where we want to go at the same time? It's impossible. You're going to have to pull on that chain and get off and get, go to, find you another bus. This was so important that God said, okay, look, I see that it's heavy. I'm going to take the spirit that I've put upon you, what I have spoke to you, because... Moses was, he was basically the town crier for heaven. God would speak to him and he'd go tell the people. Was that God's desire? No. His desire was really to speak to all people. Is that not wonderful? Why aren't you excited about that? He wants to speak to you. Do y'all realize that, you know, sometimes we hear messages, uh, a message given out and a message interpreted and we think, man, I can't wait to go back to church and hopefully a message is given out and we can hear from God. We need to be at home, in the car, saying, Lord, speak to me. God, give me a word. Talk to me. I want to fellowship with you. I want to be in your presence because God, you see everything that's going on around me. I have so many decisions I have to make every day. I need your spirit. Before he allowed him to put people in charge, he said, I'm going to take some of the spirit that I've put upon you and I'm going to put it in them. Why? Because they need to know what needs to be done. Amen. They, they're not smart all by themselves to do it. He wants them to have direction. Amen. Skip to verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. Now look what happens as soon as God's spirit comes upon him. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. 
No matter what you are going through, God is your answer. How many times have you thought, man, I need an answer? God has it. He has it. Now, I ain't saying that we shouldn't read books. I think everybody should read books. I think you should study. But we have to remember that he's the ultimate source. Sometimes when I ask God to give me a word and to show me something, he gives me a book. Sometimes he gives me a message. Sometimes he gives me a song. He can speak through us through all these different mediums of, uh, of media and CDs, DVDs, uh, other preachers and teachers, a book, articles. I mean, he can speak to us through that. But we need to give him time during our busy life to say, Lord, speak to me. Now, what would y'all have done if all of a sudden that thunder, all of a sudden you started hearing a voice? <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? I'd sit down and shut up. His mind come upon them. His spirit come upon him. They prophesied and did not cease. That is awesome. Verse 26. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them and they were of them that were written. But went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? He was saying, They are prophesying. They're doing what? That was your job, Moses. Moses was a good leader. Do you know how many leaders there are that want to hold people down? That don't want to see those that are under them grow? I always tell all of my people that are on my staff at work, I say, look, if you stay in this department, that's good, but I, I want you to grow. I love when they have to leave because they get a, get a promotion. That speaks good. I like to train leaders. I like people to discover that, hey, I can do something. God speaks to me too. I can use my gifts, my ideas, and I can do something for him. I love to follow. I love to follow great leaders. But those great leaders, they, they're leaders because they inspire me to grow. That makes a good leader. Amen? So they're seeing these people prophesy and they're, wait a minute, what is going on here? Moses, forbid them. They're doing what you usually do. Moses said unto him, envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets? Turn to your neighbor so that's you. All the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Man, that's good. That's his desire. I am so thankful that we live on this side of Jesus' resurrection because now the spirit of God can live inside of us, dwell inside of us. Numbers 14, 23 through 24. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went. And his seed shall possess it. I want to follow him fully. 1 Samuel 10, 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. When his Spirit is in you, guess what? You are new. It's amazing. You don't like who you are? Change it. 
You'll be happy when you're what God sees you as. If you're not happy with who you are, all you got to do is realize that, you know what, something is out of place because I know God's will is that if I'm in my place, he wants to see me prosper. So if I'm unhappy, then God, I'm going to seek you because there must be something out of order because everything works for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Amen? 1 Samuel 16, 13 through 14. I'm going to go through these last few scriptures kind of quick. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. This is him anointing David. And the spirit, everybody say ruach, mind. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And look. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Write this down. If the spirit of the Lord is not inside of you, you are susceptible to other spirits. I don't have the scripture in here, but uh, I, I had it in my other notes. But I remember uh, the Bible talks about a spirit of jealousy coming on one of them. We've seen spirits. We're gonna show, I'm going to show you one here in a second. Now, look, uh, one other thing. An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Did God send this evil spirit? How many know that there's nothing in creation that exists that God didn't make. Now we know there was a falling. So everything comes from him. But see, if God's spirit is not there, you're susceptible to these other spirits. That's why when we get, man, we see demons get cast out more than anywhere when we're over in Dominican. I remember uh, when Ricky told us I think it was two, two or three uh, times before when we last time we were in San Juan, and he said he got to squirming on the ground. That's a spirit. If that person had the spirit of God in them, they wouldn't be squirming on the floor. See, you get another kind of spirit in you, you don't know what you'll do. I was at a church when I was a kid, and I remember this guy was was spitting, and I it was I was probably. I don't know, nine years old. And he was just going across the front. He had been out of church for a while. We, uh, we, the church we went to was in a, in a drug area. There was a lot of drug trafficking and stuff going on there. And he had got back out. He had this addiction that he had been trying to get rid of. And he fell back out. And he got addicted. And he come in there. He knew. And he was so skinny. He had lost so much weight. He wasn't listening to God anymore. He fell back out skinny as a rail, up front, getting prayed for, and he's spitting all over the place. They got that devil out of there, and I mean, tears started coming down his face. Before we, uh, my, before my grandmother and my mom started going to a different church at that time, which I actually, since I have gotten older, I've preached there two times, and that guy, the last time I was there, was there, and he's doing good. He had a different spirit come into him and change his life. He began to listen to God. He had other influences, do these drugs. But when you hit rock bottom, you'll quit listening to those bad, those bad things. You ever had somebody that just, I mean, I had some friends when I was growing up that I knew if I listened to them, I'm gonna wind up in trouble. I remember we went, um, if my mom's watching at home, she can't do anything about it now because I don't live under her roof. I remember we went and uh, spent the night at my friend's house and lived across the street. And we had a, a couple of people come there and spend the night. It was about four or five of us boys. And man, we were, we were just, we were bad. But I had a certain degree of bad that I would go to. I don't know why we do that. We, it's like some people, y'all probably have known them. They'll just, they'll go far. 
Like they don't have any limit. But I always thought, okay, this is as far bad as I want to be. I'm not going any further. And we, uh, we had took this tent. We were staying in this camper in, the, in their backyard, spending the night. And we had, we had uh, make sure Tyler's, in, yeah, I don't see him. I don't want to hear him say, well, daddy, you did it. <laughs> we had cut a, a, a hole. It already had a little slit, but we made the hole a little bigger. And we had got a bunch of rocks. And we were, we were lived in this suburban area and we were poking our head out and we would throw it at people's awnings at their house and they'd go, bam! And then we would just duck back down inside there. And we felt so safe. We'd see their porch light come on and we would just be sitting there laughing. See? I should have listened to the Spirit of the Lord. Don't do that. <laughs> but this was as far as I was going to go. I was going to do this. So after a while... When we couldn't, we had to keep going farther to get rocks because we were tired of digging them up out of the yard. We, uh, we decided, hey, let's get on our bicycles and let's go ride. Now this, keep in mind, is about 3 a.m. in the morning. And uh, so I thought, okay, in my mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go up here to this school because I'll go there and play basketball. That's as far as I'm going to ride. And so I, went, I rode up that far with them. And when I got there, uh, they said, you know, let's go on down the road. Let's go, let's go all the way to Haywood Mall is what they said. Now, keep in mind, we were over on Sulphur Springs right near Arrington Elementary. I don't think I, I didn't know. I didn't do anything wrong, so I can't. <laughs> um, that was a long ways. And I said, no, I'm not going to go that far. Now, I had done, I'd done, done the wrong thing. I knew there was something inside of me saying, go back to the camper. I should have stayed in the camper. Now, my other friends, they had a different spirit they were listening to. And so they kept going. And it wasn't long I got back there. And I sat there in the camper just waiting, and they were all gone. And I'm just sitting there thinking, man, they're out there having fun. I'm just sitting here in this camper all by myself. About an hour goes by, and I see blue lights flashing. Pulls right up into the driveway of my friend's house. And you know what I did? I was wide awake. But as soon as that pulled up and I seen her dad come out, I seen uh, my friend's dad come out and I knew he was going to come out there, I just covered up and I'm just like, like I, I've been asleep the whole time. I hadn't done nothing. Come to find out the police had seen them riding down uh, uh, 253. And they tried to jump off and go through the woods and one of them wrecked their bike and the police officers came down there. They put their bikes in the back of the trunk, put them in the back and took them to their homes. My friend, his mom said, kept saying the next day because I didn't hear from him. They put him in his room. I stayed out there in the camper because they thought, you know, I was asleep. It was a few weeks where she would say, well, you should have been doing like Nathan was. I couldn't really enjoy that because Nathan had got out of the camera. Nathan was throwing rocks. Nathan went all the way down the road. And finally, one day, my friend just kind of snapped. And he said, well, at least, you know, he just didn't go farther than the school. And then she said, I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> we have different influences. There's things that you come across all the time. And God knows what is best. But it's up to us. We have a will. What are we going to do? I want to obey the Lord. Luke 9, 49 through 55. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him. Now, here, here, this is another thing about uh, a different spirit. And we forbade him because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Verse 52. And sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples... James and John, now how many know they're also called the sons of thunder? James and John saw this. They said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? 
even as Elias did. But he turned, Jesus did, and rebuked them and said, ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. See, they were saying something. They had seen something in the Bible that had happened. They're thinking, Lord, just like he to call down fire. Do you, do you want us to call down fire? See, they were wanting authority to do this. They wanted to do this. And Jesus is telling them, where, where did you get this spirit from? It's not mine. We can have a lot of different influences. We can have a lot of things, a lot of ideas come into our head. I have to, I, I have, I really keep this one on my mind a lot. The Bible says to be slow to speak. Do you know how much trouble we would keep ourselves out of if we'd be slow to speak? Just the time to take and say, what should I say? What should I do? Half the people you see on the program Cops would not be on there if it just took a minute to say, is this a good idea? Amen. Proverbs 123, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. See, it goes hand in hand. If his spirit is in you, which it is, he will make his words known unto you. He wants to make his words known unto you. Do you know what we just got to do? Listen. Listen. I'm guilty of this because sometimes I'll get in the prayer closet and I will not shut up. I'll be praying and praying and praying and praying. But sometimes it's just so wonderful just to stop and say, Lord, I'm listening. I feel his presence right now. I want to listen to him. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what, he's got a plan for our life. I want to listen to the one who made the blueprint. He knows what I need to do. He knows the decisions that I need to make. But we got to listen. Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit. It's the same word. Mind. Is like a city that is broken down. And without walls. Do you know what this basically comes down to? Self-control. Self-control. I don't know about you, but when I come home, I, there are competing alternatives for my time. And if I try to set time aside to do something like go in the closet and pray, things just start popping up. I wish that the Holy Ghost just jerked me and just dragged me in there and said, you're going to do this now, but it doesn't happen that way. I have a will. That's the kind of control I'm talking about. Discipline. Just have the discipline to say, Lord, your way, your will, your desire for my life. There are umpteen times a day that I have an opportunity to get in my own way. But I want his will. Amen? I want his spirit. I want his mind. His mind is in us. His spirit is in us. But we still have to listen. Ronnie, will you get that song ready? Before we go, I want us to just praise for a second. We want to thank you guys for watching us on, on the internet. If you don't know the Lord, I 
pray that you would just say this prayer. He will come into your life right where you are at and he will change your entire world. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you to come into my life. I accept the work on the cross of Calvary, the blood you shed for the remission of my sins. I accept it. And I confess, Jesus, that you are my Lord from this day forward. I cannot promise you that I'll be perfect, but I'll do my best. Come into me. Change my life. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, go to lmcigreenville.org, click contact at the top, and tell us. God bless you.